Hey, welcome. Matthias Desmet, Psychology of Totalitarianism. We're going to look at this book today. So let's just leap straight in. What is, according to him, mass formation? Well, Desmond sets forth the definition. Quote, mass formation is, in essence, a kind of group hypnosis that destroys individuals' ethical self-awareness and robs them of their ability to think critically, unquote. So Desmond's theory neither forbids nor requires conspiracy. Contrary to hypnosis, in which the hypnotizer retains awareness, Mass formation sees both, quote, both the masses and their leaders gripped by an ideologically colored narrative. Both, so to speak, are in the grip of a voice, unquote. Desmond's fundamental uh, point of departure here is that there are two kinds of science. This is kind of, we're getting at the foundation of this. Quote, at its birth, science was synonymous with open-mindedness, with a way of thinking that banished dogmas and questioned beliefs. As it evolved, however, it also turned itself into ideology, belief, and prejudice. Great science, says Desmond, is open-minded, but what he calls small science degenerates into ideology, a non-science. He says this, soon, quote, mechanistic thinking provided the grand narrative in Western civilization, unquote. So he says, when science became an ideology, it became, quote, the privileged instrument of opportunism, lies, deception, manipulation, and power. So he's kind of got two different kinds of science here. One that's very open-minded and positive and, and open to everything in the world, and one that becomes narrow and closed and, and oppressive. Those are the two different kinds. Desmet identifies this me mechanistic mindset as a pivotal cause of dehumanization and societal decay. When conditions are ripe, all that is required to trigger a mass formation is the catalyst. You have the conditions and then the catalyst. Now, invariably, when mass formation occurs, three groups are formed. One group is entirely captured by the mass formation. A larger group is not captured by the narrative, but chooses to go along with it anyway. Finally, there's a third group that, that resists the narrative. I think you can see these three groups uh, historically and in our own day. That kind of brings us to the next question, is mass formation something new? So here's a quotation, quote, the medieval mass formations were mostly local and ephemeral in nature. The mass formations of the French Revolution were already larger in scale and lasted a little longer. Those of Stalinism and Nazism were much more significant and a lot more enduring. With the coronavirus crisis, we have, for the first time in history, reached a point where the entire world population is in the grip of a mass formation over a prolonged period of time." Unquote. Now, what I found most interesting about his book was the section here where he goes into uh, actually the formation. What happens when you have a mass formation? And he outlines here four conditions and the catalyst. So according to Desmet, here are your four conditions. And these are all four quotations. First quotation. The first condition is generalized loneliness, social isolation, and lack of social bonds among the population. Here's the second one. Quote, this deterioration of social connectedness leads to the second condition, lack of meaning in life. The third one is this. The third condition is the widespread presence of free-floating anxiety and psychological unease within a population, unquote. And finally, quote, the fourth condition, in turn, also follows from the first three, a lot of free-floating frustration and aggression, unquote. So these four conditions, each one builds on the one before it. And so by the time you get all four of them in there, that's what you've got. Those are the four preconditions. Those precede, and those fulfill the requirements. They combine all of them together to fulfill the requirements for mass formation. Desmet uses the principle of convection to illustrate. And you know, when you've cooked something on the stove, at first you have limited water movement, you know, you're just starting to bring the water up to a boil, so you turn it on the heat, and there's just finally a few little bubbles, not very much water movement. But as water is brought to a full boil, soon, if you if you do a hard boil here, pretty soon every bit of water is, is percolating, it is, it is uh, rotating in that cup. So he brings that, that idea, that's kind of the illustration he uses, now, the conditions described by Desmond are the very description of our society, aren't they? I mean, he's really nailed it. 
All these are fulfilled throughout the culture. We are ripe for mass formation. And yet, even when these conditions are evident, still the catalyst is required. Now, I want you to hear his, his description of the catalyst. So you have the conditions. It's kind of like you've got, what, you know, dry wood ready to, ready to be a forest fire, but it's, you need something to get the spark. Here's what he says, quote, the catalyst for mass formation is a suggestion in the public sphere. If, under the aforementioned circumstances, a suggestive story is spread through the mass media that indicates an object of anxiety, for example, the aristocracy under Stalinism, the Jews under Nazism, the virus, and later the anti-vaxxers during the coronavirus crisis, and at the same time offers a strategy to deal with that object of anxiety, there is a real chance that all the free-flowing anxiety will attach itself to that object and there will be broad social support for the implementation of the strategy to control that object of anxiety." Unquote. So there's the propagation of a story that points to an object of anxiety. Something is wrong. Uh, what is that something? And uh, it, the story tells what that something is and it tells how you're going to deal with that object. By providing the catalyst, the pent-up free-floating energy already created by the four conditions, uh, which is seeking release, it, it is just unleashed. And we have just lived through that in the last 32 months. And so in Germany, our problems are caused by the Jews. Boom, solution provided. In the Soviet, Stalin Soviet Union, we have these problems, boom, solution provided, and so on. So as Desmond points out, quote, through a common struggle with the enemy, the disintegrating society regains its coherence, energy, and rudimentary meaning. For this reason, the fight against the object of anxiety then becomes a mission laden with pathos and group heroism. In this fight, all latent brewing frustration and aggression is taken out, especially on the group that refuses to go along with the story and the mass formation." Unquote. So all that is needed is a society that intentionally or unintentionally has been primed. Just that, just that, and the catalyst. Now the author has described the mechanism of the mass formation process, but is there anything, you know, that we can do about it? For example, he says that even under increasingly totalitarian conditions, quote, there always remain opportunities, unquote. While inroads in the thinking of the they drank the Kool-Aid group are pretty unlikely, the largest group are that in between middle, the middle group that's unconvinced, they're not really totally on board the narrative, but they are going along to get along, they're just kind of going along. That group is able to, to you can make some progress there. So let me just read what Desmond says about that quote. In contrast to the first group, this group is responsive to the quality of rational argument. Therefore, it is important that the dissident voice analyzes and refutes the indoctrination and propaganda of the totalitarian narrative in the clearest and most substantiated way possible. In a sense, this is not difficult since the totalitarian discourse, especially its typical excessive use of numbers and statistics, is usually simply absurd. For the opposition, it is a matter of repeatedly and persistently through the lim admittedly limited channels available for that purpose, piercing the web of appearance and showing so far as possible the way in which a false image is being created." Unquote. Left to itself, a sinful system will destroy itself. Now there's much more to say, but I've left it aside because I, I, you really should get the book if you have an interest in this. Uh, I'm trying to limit this and not go into everything that he has. So the things I've left out include the author's insight into how electronically mediated interactions create feelings of emptiness. That was really fascinating to me. How there is a current crisis within the sciences over wildly unreliable data and results. That was really interesting. How conspiracy theories usually obscure the facts instead of helping. Uh, there is also his discussion of the remarkable power of suggestion, placebo, nocebo, and psychogenic death. Uh, that was maybe the most interesting. And even how great science, how, you know, you have the two sciences, how great science 
is turning to a more than mechanistic worldview that is open to God. I'd be interested in some of the quotes he has on that. With reference to his book, in a short space, Desmet unpacks a highly plausible explanatory framework describing the present situation in our world. From a Christian standpoint, since the members of a church congregation all come from the same source, you know, a society marinated in conditions ripe for mass formation, we, we shouldn't be too surprised that these past 32 months, in some respects, that congregations have found themselves divided in surprising ways. We appear to be in a mass formation that's in some respects quite similar to the French Revolution. I hope not all respects but it's adapted to this rapidly changing technocratic age that we are in. Possibly the most surprising development has been that so many church members and denominational leaders were found so susceptible to the catalyst. Why have so many taken seriously the suggestive stories spread via mass media? Has primitive godliness been, been utterly left behind? There has been a radical reshuffling, an urgent seeking, uh, renewed interest in finding more precisely what tribes we belong to or should belong to. But how can an individual admit that possibly he has some conversion issues? Or how can he give an account for how easily he was swept up in the formation? Who, 32 months or so into this global crisis, is willing to revisit the possibility that he has operated on the basis of a mistaken sense of what was real. A lot of people aren't really going to be up for that. According to Desmet, quote, we are experiencing the end point of a cycle, the moment at which a ruling ideology is driven to its ultimate consequence, rears up with its full power for one last time, and thereby shows its powerlessness in a definitive and final way, unquote. Well, I sure hope that's the case. It seems unlikely that the author shares a Bible perspective on end time events, but he understands totalitarianism pretty well. Totalitarianism, he says, quote, is not a historical coincidence. In the final analysis, it is the logical consequence of mechanistic thinking and the delusional belief in the omnipotence of human rationality, unquote. He's right. The masses believe in the story not because it's accurate, but because it creates a new social bond. And for many people today, this is not about truth. It is about crucial elements of civilization which, quote, small science cannot provide. And so people are grasped for the social bond because it's something, and, and something, sometimes something is all that it, it seems is within your reach. So you're going to grasp for something. So. Friend, our society needs God. Instead, all we're getting is this lousy technocratic t-shirt. Most of you would be helped by Desmet's book. So I would say two thumbs up. I believe we are in a mass formation and in a time when people's ethical self-awareness has been compromised and critical thinking skills are impaired. Here's an opportunity to better understand this extremely dangerous phenomenon that we are living in the middle of. So thank you. Dr. Matthias, really good. This guy is arming us with something useful. Let's take advantage of the insights that this gentleman has for us in this time.